Get fit. Mind, body, and soul. With pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Get Fit, Mind, Body, and Soul. I'm very thankful and grateful for today. Um, my name is DeAndre Borrell, and I'm a former NFL player playing for three NFL teams. Uh, I played overseas in Finland. Right now, currently, I'm founder and owner of the performance health and wellness business, Create Elite LLC. Uh, also an impact speaker, uh, community leader, as well as a part of the nonprofit Minority Psychology Network. Okay. Um, our objective is to inspire, encourage, uh, and help transform those lives uh, from the youth to adults, uh, the youth, high school, everybody. We want to be able to impact everybody here um, on this show. Uh, we want to talk about mental fitness, spiritual fitness, and physical fitness. So we're very grateful and thankful uh, for today. And uh, I want to start off with this verse here. It is Luke 6 and 38. Give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So just very grateful for that. So we want to say thank you. God for this morning. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the peace. Thank you for the joy. Uh, we're grateful to continue to love, to continue to pour into people um, and continue, God, to fill us up before we pour out of an empty cup. So fill us up, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and just continue to protect us, keep us, and help us in areas that we need help in. In Jesus' name, amen. So definitely, we are here to help you start your finish, fitness journey. Um, we're here to inspire you and create an atmosphere to where you are transformed, you're changed. And um, you know we'll do that through discussions, through interviews, through um, you know uh, articles, through sports articles, whatever we need to do, uh, hot topics in the sports world uh, to get you going and get you motivated and inspired and influenced. So we're very grateful for today. And, um, you know, we have a couple of special guests, two special guests uh, that are getting prepared to come on. And uh, we're just grateful to have them. Uh, we have Michael Mosby. and jock crawford so jock we're very thankful to have you jock crawford is an njcaa offensive player of the year he's entering his ninth year of professional sports right he's entering his ninth you, year. yes sir i can hear you can you hear me he's entering his ninth year of professional sports and he's played in five countries, USA, Finland, Brazil, um, Romania, and he's in Germany right now. So we're very great. Hear me? Him here. Yes, sir. I can hear you. I can't hear you for some reason. We can hear you. I can hear you. Hello, hello, hello. So we're very grateful to have him here. Hopefully we get that sound fixed right now. But um, just a little bit more about Jack Crawford. He has signed a new contract to Berlin Thunder, the Berlin Thunder that's in Germany. Um, he signed last year and played in the new ELF League. And this year he's playing again so he signed a new contract this year 
and uh, just very grateful. Ninth season, um, a little bit more about him. He also has played basketball overseas and ran track overseas. So that is an amazing thing. That's amazing. Good morning, Apostle Faith Walters. We're grateful to have you, thankful to have you. It's a blessing. Hopefully we can get Jog back on here. Hey, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you. I had to take the headphones out. Oh, yep. It's all good, man. We were just talking about you right now about, uh, man, you being an offensive player of the year, entering your ninth season as a pro athlete. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that you put that in your bio because I was just talking about how you played basketball overseas professionally and ran track overseas. So we just want to hear a little bit more about uh, right now about your career. Um, you know, just pr playing pro and what, well, not what, but why did you decide to take your talent overseas? Um, I think for me, it was the opportunity. Um, the end goal was always to, to get into the NFL. And unfortunately, that didn't happen for me um, for several reasons, but it kept my dream alive uh, to have the option to go overseas and to continue playing. And and ultimately, it, it turned into a, a great profession for me. Um, I've been able to see the world, different different countries, different cultures, and uh, just allow myself to take advantage of that uh, blessing that God granted me. For sure, man. I'm very thankful. You are you're an amazing, amazing person, amazing athlete. Uh, me and Jock actually met. Okay, and now we now we got Michael Mosby. Okay, Michael Mosby, here he is. Man, he's a father of four. He's born in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, very excited to have you. He is a head football coach at Oak Haven High. Um, man, he's married to his his beautiful wife, Shante Mosby. Man, he's a musician. Um, he does it all. Just very grateful to have him here. Uh, welcome. Mike to the Get Fit Mind, Body, and Soul. We're just talking to Jock about his um his background and sports and and how he got into it and why he took his talent to overseas. So, Mike, since you're in here now, let's go ahead and introduce yourself and let the people know who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Man, cool. Uh, what's good? What's good? What's good? Uh, what's up, Jock Crawford? Man, what's going on? What's going on? Man, uh. Man, I'm, I'm Coach Mike, Mike Mosby, man. People call me Coach Mike, so people call me Mike Mosby. I ever go. Uh, man, I am uh, a lot of things, amongst a lot of things. So I, uh, man, currently, I would say, well, let me start with, I'm husband, father, uh, man, have a beautiful wife, and, uh, man, four kids. Unfortunately, one of them is actually an angel baby. So, uh, man, we have, man, Little Madison, Michaela, and Micah, our angel baby, who we just celebrated, uh, man, her first her first birthday, man, on this past Tuesday. So uh, that that was an interesting situation. So I'm I'm founder and director, man, of Raising the Bar Community Development nonprofit organization. We're a five hundred one c three organization here in Memphis. Uh, man, I'm a music director, man, entertainment director for. Uh, Several festivals, man, here in the city, man, several shows, multiple artists. Um, also, a high school head football coach, man, which is one of my favorites. So, uh, a high school head football coach, uh, man, I'm an arts administrator for the Memphis Music Initiative. And, man, again, just a motivated speaker, man. Most importantly, man, I was just a dude who, who made it out and, man, have committed my life to giving back to where, uh, man, where it all started. Man, giving back to where it all started for sure. For sure, that's 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 a blessing. You see, I got the you already know I got the yeah, raising the bar shirt on. We raising the bar over here. Um, so Jock, uh, just wanna I wanna ask you, you know, if those of you that are in the show watching, uh, Jock is also from Memphis, Tennessee. So it's a blessing how this comes around full circle. And uh, to meet these people, you know, I met Jock 
in Green Bay uh, when I was playing for the Packers. That's an amazing yeah, thing. 2012. <laughs> 2012. So, uh, Jock, I just want to I want to ask you, what is OSPA, A-W-W-S-P-A? Um, explain what that is and let the people know what it's for. <laughs> Um, so Allspa was uh, created uh, once I started my journey in Brazil. And what I found out was that they're in Brazil, their culture needs uh, advocates for American football um, because it start, they started playing football there around 2006. And so by this time, I've already graduated high school and had so much knowledge to give back. And so um, I was approached by current soccer players to teach them how to play American football, which is second nature to me. Well, first nature to me, uh, because I've been playing since I was five. And so in Brazil, the economy isn't where it should be. And it's, it's difficult for, you know, just the average athlete to pay for elite training. And mm-hmm. so I just felt like it was um, a good thing for me to be able to give back um, with something that God blessed me to do um, and placed me in a place where my knowledge is needed. And so I came up and created AllSpa uh, with the goal to, to bridge a gap with America and Brazil and also create avenues and, and other uh, ways for Americans who don't actually get that opportunity to go pro NFL college or whatever to yeah. you know take advantage of this opportunity to go play and experience the world while doing something that you love so I just wanted to put something together that will give back to the community but also um, provide ways and opportunities for athletes to continue to play ball for sure man that's a blessing uh just from both of you it's about giving back and um Mike, I know with raising the bar, you know, um, man, what made you come up with make moves that count? That is the saying that sticks. Sometimes I want to say it, but I'm like, I got to be careful because, you know, Mike got a trademark. So, you know, make moves that count is trademark. So all y'all out there that's, you know, you can't you can't use it. It's, it's his. So he trademarked and it's, and it's big. So um, go ahead and talk a little bit more about that. Man, hey, you can definitely use it, man. Make sure you tag me or something, man. I want the credit. Uh man, just uh but I definitely trademark it. Man, it was that's interesting. Like make moves that count. Uh man, it came like man, I, I struggle a lot, man. I struggle a lot. Even like I moved out of the city, man. I came back to the city uh after man, just like some unfortunate situations happened, man, while I lived in Atlanta. Uh and then I came back to city, man. I was just on the grind, man. Like a lot of people thought that I was like, man, my Mike that came back from all the year, musician, man, going for it. No, man, I was just grinding. I was just grinding. Uh, I knew that I was going to continue to do raising the bar at some point, man. I, I had that vision back in 2000, 2003, four, and I told one of my homies, man, uh, my homie Claiborne, I was like, yo. I'm gonna start a nonprofit. Well, I didn't say nonprofit. So I'm like, man, I'm gonna start this mo- movement. It's gonna be, man, called raising the bar. Man, we're gonna be saving kids. I was like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. My total in 2004, man. And uh, I got back to Memphis. So of course, I started it as a a program then in Memphis City Schools. But I didn't know nothing about nonprofit. So like, man, I was able to learn much more about nonprofit when I was living in Atlanta. Man, thanks to man, a really good accountant friend of mine. But when I got back to Memphis, man, 2011, uh, it, it man, it was just struggle, dog. It was, it was, I was struggling, man. And interesting, I was like playing gigs, was still struggling, throwing parties and shows, was still struggling, man. And I was just like, man, you know, you gotta get back to purpose, dog. So like around 2013, 14, man, I decided I'm gonna get back to purpose. So I started going back doing stuff in the schools and, man, just going, doing what I know I saw in 2004. So I was in this particular relationship. And in the relationship, man, it was a very interesting uh, ending to it. But, man, the words that were said to me was, man, I think it's stupid that you are uh, going to schools for free. Man, that stuff don't count. Yada, 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 yada. Like, I was like, okay, cool. So when that relationship ended, man, I was like, man, it's all good because this is my vision. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make moves that count. 
And when I yes. said it for the first time, I was like, "Bam, that's it. That's a ring." So yes. I immediately made it as a hashtag, and so many people like was like, "Yeah, man, that's like make moves that count, make moves that count." But sometimes you gotta be smart enough to know, man. Like you gotta go ahead and stay ahead of the curve. So man, I immediately got to uh, trademark process with it because I knew that it's gonna be a ring, man. And like we just really will make moves that count. Just getting started, like man, it's it's a mantra. So it's been a thing. Like a lot of people here in Memphis, they see me, they they all say, "What's up, Mike?" They be like, "What's up, make moves that count." You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a ring, though. Like so many people, so many celebrities, man, so many man, like folks have got the wristband, make moves that count. They shouted it out on their uh, social media, man. They shouted it out with me standing right there, man. Uh, so. It's it's a theme, man. It's just, it's a ring. It got a ring to it, but it's it's a way of life. Man. Like, so it, it came from like a place of man, you know, where I was really struggling, but at the time nobody nobody was really supportive other than family. So I was like, man, you know what? It's all right. We we're not gonna we, we're gonna get active. We're gonna make moves that count, man. We're gonna make moves that count. So ever since then, I've kind of like adapted it, adopted it. That's that's my creed. That's 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 where it's at with me. For sure, man. That's a blessing, man. Um, just both of you. Like I said, it's about giving back. And, um, you know, I'm just thankful to know you all. Very grateful for you all. Um, you know, I met Mike, Coach Mike. Um, it just came around full circle pretty fast. So I met him through uh, the church I go to, Hope Church. And, um, man, even how that happened, met the pastor for the Young Adult Singles Ministry. Pastor Fondren, and then from that point, uh, he introduced me. We went to I went to an event on a Sunday, and he introduced me to Mike, and and Mike was already heading to uh, Seven on Seven in Kansas City. I believe it was Seven on Seven for the Chiefs, so he was directing that head coach for the team uh, for the youth. So that's how we connected, and um, you know. Uh, he went into coaching coach Mike went into coaching and um, you know, just very grateful to be a part of that. Um, and I want to, I want to just dive into, you know, we're just going to have a discussion, short discussion of overcoming mental and physical and spiritual adversities, uh, just short answers of you guys going through things and seeing different things in your life. Just, Physical body change, it could be physical body change, it could be mental change. It's it's all fitness, right? Because we're all getting better as we grow. So as we grow, we want to get better physically, mentally, and spiritually, right? Because hey, we just want to operate at the highest level at where we are at. So um just give a give a testimony or an experience, man, of of how you've overcame adversity mentally, physically, and spiritually. And you guys can have a discussion with each other. We'll just feel free to say, talk when you want to talk and, and speak when you want to speak. Uh, I mean, if Mike, if you want to go first, you can. Or if not, um, I don't mind taking the floor. Right, so right, you. I guess I, I, I'll start it off. Um, I guess for me, um, I had to overcome uh, the whole mental, both all of all of those aspects, um, because being in a position of offensive player of the year in college, you you create this uh, expectation for yourself that you you're eventually going to go pro, and you know, long story short, things didn't work out in my favor the way that I wanted to, and I suffered uh, from depression from not being happy and not being in the place that I wanted to be. And it resulted in me, you know, uh, drinking a lot and, and being lost in the world. And I ended up gaining so much weight. I gained almost 50 pounds uh, from my playing weight. And so wow. uh, once I got motivated to, to get back to playing, I had to lose that weight. I had to give up drinking and, and things that wasn't good for my body uh, and and even friends that wasn't good for me, you know, spiritually and the goals that I had for myself. And I, I needed to do that and break away from those things to get right. And, you know, uh, thanks be to God that I was able to, to isolate myself for a few years and get away from the norm, get away from what I was used to and became uncomfortable 
living in a different country for four or five years, not returning home, um, having to learn another language and uh, uh, another way of living, but also uh, taking advantage of it. And, and it matured me uh, where I knew that I didn't need to drink. I didn't need to do this and do that. I didn't need to go party all the time to, to feel accepted, but do what God blessed me to do, which was to play ball. And people were drawn to me and my personality. And I started meeting, you know, uh, um, a majority of the right people that will keep me motivated and started meeting people that I motivated. And for me, it was, it was a, a tremendous blessing to, to get over that hump in my life because, you know, it's, it's not good to have, you know, a bad mental state where you, you want to give up on life in general. And I've been there. And so it's, yeah. it's good to be able to be a influence and encourage others to, to see it through and to, you know, you can be that adversity. Don't give up on your dreams. It may not work out the way you want to, but if you keep chasing it, eventually God's going to place you where you need to be. For sure, man. That Hey, that's a blessing. That's a testimony right there, man. For real. That's a real testimony, bro. You didn't touch up on everything. And, you know, Mike, I know you got yours, too. Um, man, I know you've been through a lot. Uh, we got a few minutes left. But, man, just just give what you have, man, what's on your heart, what's on your spirit, man, and let the people know um, what you've overcame, man, in every area of your life. Uh, man, like. I can talk about the coaching aspect. Uh, I've been coaching since 2012. Since 2012, man, I'm, I can talk about the music. I can talk about. I'm gonna talk about 2021. Like, man, 2021, man. Uh, last year was man, a year, like for sure, for uh, man, myself, for my family, for man, like people that love me. Man, man, it, it was a year, y'all. Like, it, it was a real year. So you talking about having to have mental toughness, man. You talking about having to overcome, man. All all things thrown your way, and man, it it, it was it was last year, man. It was last year, like man, it it was last year. Oh uh, man, like I just told you guys, we have an angel baby, but that was February fifteenth, man. Uh, we gave birth, and and, and I, our baby didn't make it, you know, and that that alone is <laughs> like the way everything went down, man. I won't go much detail for the sake of time, but it, it 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 was it was not the greatest situation at all. And then man, burying the baby, we buried a baby <laughs> like March first. <laughs> like a baby. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then after that, man, April third, my closest uncle died. Like, man, and then after that it was just death after death after death, man. We Man, we experienced, I lost three uncles, two close friends, and a baby last year, all within seven months, man. And, like, during that time, though, you still had to be strong enough for your family. Man, I had to still be supportive for my wife, for sure. Man, uh, I still stay the community leader. I still stay active. Man, DeAndre, you know, we still had camps. We still took boys, man, yeah. out of the town to seven-on-seven -seven tournaments. And, man, we still, I still... Like went into the schools. I still like man, just kept doing the work, man. And, and the work was actually part of my therapy. But however, man, like it's it's until, until today, like currently, it's just not the easiest thing to like deal with, you know, and continue to go for You still have to, as a nonprofit executive, I still had to go to board meetings, still had to like man, just be there. I still had to be all my roles, man. And I, I went to therapy. Like I started going to therapy. Man, I went to counseling, grief counseling, mental health counseling, like, man, and still currently is going to do that because, man, it's, bro, like, it, it, was, it was tragic. Last year was tragic, for lack, for lack of better words. Last year was tragic. And, but, like, I got I got a book, Make Moves That Count, man, 21 Gems for the Driven. It's an ebook on Amazon. And it's just literally 21 day journal. And one of the journals, it says, man, Commitment supersedes condition, and like I feel like you know how we post stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? We may motivate people, get people lit or whatever, but then life will be like, I right, bet I'm gonna put you to the test. You know oh, yeah. what I'm saying? And it's like it's like that. 2021 was that like life. I, I bet you are gonna stay committed. Your conditions is completely jacked up right now. Your conditions is 
your emotions is shot for all legit reasons. Like, bro, you you done right now emotionally. So are you going to stay committed? And it's one of those things. I, I was football practice plenty of times, and, man, I would just walk the park a lot and cry, like sat on top of the press box and just cry. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's one of those things, dog. Like, my commitment, I, I feel like God was like, yo, like, I, I'm going to honor you for, for your commitment, man, because your commitment definitely has superseded, man, this, this test, this test, this this – these trials I done put you through, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, all right, bet, let's let's get through it. And two things for sure that I learned, man, after after losing the baby, we had we had so many, so many supporters, so many people, people were sending love from everywhere, you know what I'm saying? And like I had to tell people, man, stop sending flowers, bro. Like it was it was that, you know what I'm saying? It was just so it was it was so much love. I told two, I told people the two biggest things I got out of last year, starting in back in February of 2021, was number one, nobody is exempt from life trials. Nobody is exempt from life trials and things. It don't matter how much great work. It don't matter, like my organization, we serve over 200 young black boys in the city. Man, that, that, that's great work. But that, that don't make us exempt. That don't make me personally exempt from life trials. Like that, that's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Jock, you're doing great work. Deandre, you're doing great work. And it's like, man, like, no, it doesn't, like, doesn't make us as if, like, life gonna come and be like, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm here. What you got, right? And that's number one. Nobody is exempt from life's trials. And number two, God gives the toughest battle to the strongest soldiers. Man, like, so I was like, man, that that's it. That's it, man. My homegirl, my homegirl told me that miracle, my homegirl miracle told me, she's like, Mike, don't worry about it, boy. God gives the toughest battle to the strongest soldiers. And when she said it, I was like, man, that was it. That was it. Those are two biggest lessons I learned from last year, man. And, and, and like legit, like when we going through the craziest stuff in our life, I was like, you know what? Consider yourself privileged. Like, like God consider us a maybe we consider his strongest soldier. Consider us privileged. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it's 2021 was that year for me. Like, man, and all the things that I've been through, all the street stuff, all the other stuff, all man, none of none of that trumps last year for sure. So. Man, that's it. That's, that was, I had to get that that's a blessing. That's, hey, that's a blessing, and and that is true because I've had my personal battles, and where we're going is where God wants us to go. So, through all the experiences, we may not have had the ones we thought were supposed to be, but where God intended us to be, He's taking us because it's bigger than what we thought. We were supposed to go where we thought we were supposed to go. Um, before we go, I'm going to read a few comments. We have Apostle Faith Walters. Um, well, she has one here, but we have one at the top. She said earlier, says, wow, powerful testimony. Look at God. He made it happen. Mr. Crawford, your situation was a comeback to fulfill the plan and purpose for your life. Um, her next comment says, we got to persevere in spite of. What a testimony, what an inspiration. Thank you for all this. You and me radio, commitment supersedes conditions. That is, that's powerful. Entrepreneurs allowed. Wow, I am inspired. Commitment supersedes conditions. Satin Brownie, yes, speak. And Apostle Faith Walters, with all that you do, you both do, how do you maintain balance between your family, spiritual and career life? Um, It's just a blessing to have you guys here. Very thankful and grateful for this. I, I actually, I can feel the Lord right now. So I'm very excited. I know, Jock, whenever you get the opportunity. I, I want to chime in on that, too. I want to back, backdoor you on on, uh, on on that, too, but after you finish. Just just something really quick, though, uh, just speaking on how God works, though. For sure, for sure. Um, I know we're getting towards the time right now. And, again, like, I'm very thankful for both of you. Um we are going to have a part two. We need to have a part two. We will have a part two because there's a lot to speak about. You know, um, I know next time, you know, we'll get some more questions on fitness with Jock because he is a trainer as well. And Coach Mike with some mental fitness tips, some things that uh, he has for us. So we're very grateful for you. Don't forget to like, share, and comment. Uh, and uh, get ready for the next show. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. Uh, because greatness is who we are and that's what we produce greatness that's who god created us to be love you all stay blessed
Have a great day. It's you, me, radio. Touching your airwaves like something you've never heard before. You, me, radio. Listen to you.